the prophets. church lost the Melchizedek priesthood in 1834, like officially, when they were demoted from the Church of Christ to the Church of the Latter-day Saints. They have not had the Melchizedek priesthood since 1834. Even though I like these questions, yeah. none of it matters. The only thing that matters right now is learning from personal revelation how to offer God your broken heart and contrite spirit. Again, I'll Take gladly talk today. with you more about this once I have right. a chance to go right. and because read it. It's incredibly arrogant when you just say, um, uh, that's how you interpret it. That is an arrogant prick move. Oh, wow! It is. Thanks, it Jacob. Is. Hey, hey! No, it, I'm, it, I'm, I'm really not, feeling, I'm like, really feeling the spirit I, real strongly I, from you right I, now. In other words, the, the corporation known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints is not recognized by the Savior Jesus Christ as His institution. Kwaku, you take it and don't apologize. No. Also, it's it's this is a new, this is a new like movement. So. We're trying to figure out what exactly the beliefs are, right? Yeah. So, You're going to find out. So, General um, Conference has been starting off trying to respond to this. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I'm curious. Then what's the valid succession of Joseph Smith? If he was In killed, words, then who followed Joseph up? Smith hold, Joseph Smith holds the keys to this day. Let me give you another movie to look up. And it's much shorter than the other one. It's simply called The Return of Joseph Smith. It's on the channel that's called Doctrine of Christ, and it is about Joseph Smith's return for the end time exodus. I'm going to I'm going to simply for those who are wondering, is there something I should look up? Simply look up Joseph Smith's patriarchal blessing at the hands of Oliver Cowdery. When you read it, not only is it powerful along the lines of the visions of Isaiah, but you realize none of this happened during Joseph Smith's life okay so i so, guess well, i on. guess how do, and how does any of that even if you think he still holds the keys and he's going to be returning to help how how does that preclude the rest of church history yeah. and brigham well, young and all of those the prophets? church lost the melchizedek priesthood in 1834 like officially when they were demoted from the church of christ to the church of the latter-day saints they have not had the melchizedek priesthood since 1834 so no melchizedek priesthood all of utah and, all and of what is your else. evidence for that what Doct Doctrine and Covenants section 84, verses 23 through 26, and I'll just make quick work of this right here. So it makes clear how the Latter-day Saints went through the same exact steps that the children of Israel did anciently. So you know how it'd be so cool if you like post-production put up the screenshot of section 84, starting with <laughs> verses 23. No, I now this... And I, you're going to notice when I say the word Moses, I'm going to interject also the word Joseph Smith. When I say the ancient Israelites, I'm going to say the Latter-day Saints in the days of Joseph Smith. So people can start to ask themselves, is this a fair comparison? Were the Latter-day Saints supposed to consider themselves in the same circumstances? Verse 23 of section 84. Now this Moses and Joseph Smith plainly taught to the children of Israel and the Latter-day Saints in his day in the wilderness and sought diligently to sanctify their people that they might behold the face of God. But they, the children of Israel anciently and the Latter-day Saints in the days of Joseph Smith, hardened their hearts and could not endure his presence. Therefore, the Lord in his wrath, for his anger was kindled against them, swore that they, the ancient Israelites and the Latter-day Saints in the days of Joseph, should not enter into his rest, which is the fullness of his glory. And the Lord took Moses and Joseph Smith out of their midst, and the holy priesthood also, and the lesser priesthood continue, which priesthood holdeth the key of the ministering of angels." The Kirtland Temple was built so that the Latter-day Saints in mass would receive the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost. Rock and on! And, and literally, Woo! be prepared to enter into the presence of the Lord. Well, the Latter-day Saints did not receive that blessing. Joseph Smith did, Oliver Cowdery, a hound full of others, became witnesses of the glorified, resurrected Jesus Christ, similar to, as described John in the, in the early chapters of the book of Revelation. But... Because the Latter-day Saints would not climb the mountain figurative, figuratively like the ancient Israelites in the days of Moses, they're demoted. Hey, you're not going to enter into the presence of the Lord. If you want the higher priesthood back, you have to finish the Nauvoo Temple in the time that's been allotted to you. And I'm going to give you just one more scripture along those lines of losing the Melchizedek priesthood. Okay. And you tell, 
<laughs> you tell me if this has ever been mentioned in an elders quorum. I'm going over to Doctrine and Covenants, section 124, verses 28 through 32. Now, this is, this is now 1838. They're established in Nauvoo. The Lord's given instructions. If you want the Melchizedek priesthood back, for there is not a place found on earth that he, the Lord, may come to restore again that which was lost unto you, or that which he hath taken away, even the fullness of the priesthood. It was a foregone conclusion. You've already lost the fullness of the priesthood. I'm skipping forward to verse 32. Behold, at the end of this appointment to build the Nauvoo temple, your baptisms for your dead shall not be acceptable unto me. And if you Latter-day Saints do not these things at the end of the appointment I've given you, ye shall be rejected as a church with your dead, saith the Lord your God. After the assassination of Joseph Smith, Nauvoo Temple, nowhere near completion in any form, the Latter-day Saints abandoned all the revelations regarding establishing the kingdom of God right then and there. The Nauvoo Temple is tried to be sold multiple times by Brigham Young. It gets burnt. I think it even gets hit by a tornado. And the Latter-day Saints are now driven across to establish in the in the Utah Wasatch Mountains where I'm at right now. Yeah, but that in other words, the, the Lord of, was true to his word that they lost the fullness of the priesthood and they were rejected as a church with their dead. That is certainly how you interpret that. Yeah, well, okay, well, that's well, I, guess, what I, it I, I don't think that's I mean, what well, it's hold, saying. Hold on, I'm just, that, yeah, I, well, hold on. I'd love this to where that's how you interpret that. That's what it says. People can read that for themselves. Dude, you are Jeremy <laughs> Reynolds 2.0. Uh, you are Jeremy on, Reynolds 2.0, bro. No, well, he's no, no he's, cynical, he's, 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 he's well, nice. How do you interpret it differently? <laughs> because I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. When I simply read the scriptures without my interpretation, that's your interpretations. You can read it for yourself. How do you interpret differently? that they lost the fullness of the priesthood. When you read those words, what does it say to you? Yeah, that's a good question. How do you interpret it differently? I want to hear it. I haven't read well, those recently enough to give you a really solid answer right have now. Because I'm looking at those? this. What? Have what? you ever read those? Yes. I've so read all Lord of the scriptures says, in their entirety. When the Lord says that the Latter-day Saints have already lost the fullness of the priesthood, how do you interpret it? Well, well hold on. I was, I was going to I want to hear it. Hold on. I want to hear this. Well, I was going to answer you my answer. I thought he said that he didn't have I want to hear yeah. his first. You say that's your interpretation. So what is yours? When the Lord says you've lost the fullness of the priesthood, what does it mean to you? Is that what the Lord said to those people at that time? I don't think so. You, you're putting in Joseph Smith and the Latter-day Saints when he's talking about Moses here. You're twisting the scriptures. Well, we just read in Doctrine and Covenants section 124 verses 28 through 32. I hope the audience presses pause and looks up, reads it for themselves right now. In 1838, when the Lord says to the Latter-day Saints who are dragging their feet to complete the Nauvoo Temple, if you don't finish, you're rejected as a church with your dead. What does that mean to you? Uh, if I were, if I were Again, I'll gladly talk with you more about this once I have right, a chance to go right, and read it. It's incredibly arrogant when you just say, um... Uh, that's how you interpret it. That is an arrogant prick move. Oh, wow! Savage. It is. Thanks, it is. Jacob. Hey, hey, no, it, I'm, it, I'm, it, I'm really not, feeling, I'm like, really feeling the spirit I, real strongly I, from you right now. I'm so sure that you're not driven by on, any on, dark, on, on, dark on, thing on, right there. Hold on, chill out, Brad. Jacob, hold you on, got, yeah, hold on. You got to be kidding hold me. On, it's my, my show. Yeah, I know I'm it's your show. I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. I, I am okay. too. I'm trying to understand him, and I'm telling him, look, you're putting all of these meanings into and the scriptures. And what I'm asking your interpretation, saying, uh, okay. it's nothing. And well, I'm not saying, nothing. I'm going to go look it up, and we can talk about it later, okay. bro. Hold I hope on. at length. Let's have, a, let's have a fun Hold one. Hold on. I got the button. I got the button. Go for it, Cardin. Okay. Don't want to use the button, but I got it. Okay. So, first off, to me, there's a very softball answer to that, saying the fullness is taken away. Uh, Okay, there's tons of scriptures that say, you know, if you're not doing A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, amen to the priest or that man. Doesn't mean he loses it forever. You know what I'm saying? Um, there, there's there's all kinds of ways that you could say, okay, I, I interpret that a little bit more lightly. And I'm sometimes a little bit worried about um, arguments that depend upon one scripture and the interpretation thereof, because then you kind of get in hazy waters like Catholics saying, OK, the rock upon which this church is founded was St. Peter. And then we say, well, it was actually Revelation. And then it kind of requires a breadth of knowledge of all the scriptures pointing towards one way to kind of understand what God was saying. Right. So I accept that you want to say, OK, cool. They didn't build the Nauvoo Temple. So their church and their dead were rejected. Fine. That if. If that's the, that's what you read into it, awesome. I'm actually not here to say that you're wrong. I look at that and I think, man, that's a harsh God. 
Yeah. They were experiencing wild persecution that was not of any of their doing. And despite their sacrifice bigger than most saints in most dispensations, except for maybe the earliest saints in the early church, they were still building it while, you know, making such great Africa. It's difficult for me to swallow the interpretation of a God that would say them and their dead are rejected because they didn't yeah. build the temple on time while being actively persecuted and killed by the mob while simultaneously trying to do their best efforts because that goes against the doctrine of redemption and this idea that God's grace makes up for us as long as we're doing all that we can do. I, I feel that as Nephi said, that God's grace kicks in once we can do all that we can do. Those early saints were, were doing all they could do, brother. Uh, I, I, I don't know. That what, seems too Lord, harsh was the Lord to be being unfair to them? I'm sorry. Uh, Zoom cut out. What'd you well, say? But was the Lord being unfair to them? Because here's what we read in section 124. It's 1838. Uh -huh. There's no mobs at the door. Why do you think the Lord gave them such a specific time frame and says, if you don't finish it in this time, you're rejected as a church with your dead. Why did he say that? Uh, I, I would assume that one would think he knew the persecutions and those burnings and those invasions were, were, were coming is what you're suggesting, I assume, right? Uh, no. Okay. In other words, the way that we portray the persecutions of the Latter-day Saints in the days of Nauvoo, there was no armies that were coming in there to invade them. What there is is plenty of documentation of diverting funds to different projects aside from the Nauvoo Temple. There was land speculation among those who were in charge of church funds to where it's no longer being used for church purposes, but to buy up lands and make a bunch of uh, personal profit. The Lord's now saying, if you want to waste your time on these other things and not get my house built, you're going to be rejected as a church with your dead. They were being told, you've already lost the fullness of the priesthood. If you want to progress on to being rejected as a church with your dead, keep going the route that you're going because I'm giving you sufficient time to build the house that I've commanded you to build. So okay, I mean, I can, fair enough. That sounds like God in the deserts during the 40 days of Exodus, right? Quaku? So if I can interject. Um, yeah. So when you're saying they, that God rejected the church and they're dead, yeah. do you mean an ultimate rejection? Yeah. Well, like here's, a, like no the, celestial kingdom? Because – what, let me let me go back to this question. Did God reject them as a church with their dead, no celestial kingdom? Yeah. Yes. Now, is that kind of Calvinist? Like, well, I, I don't know anything about I've only heard him mention. I can't speak on behalf of Calvin. But let me mention this. The primary ordinance that holders of the Melchizedek priesthood, that, that first order held by the apostles, I've, I've heard it referred to as the apostolic order, of the Melchizedek priesthood, they having power in the Melchizedek priesthood. They would give the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is not some eight or nine year old or recent convert who's being told you're now confirmed a member of the church, receive a Holy Ghost. And let me okay. say some nice things in a public setting. Okay. When it happened, it was such an overwhelming spiritual event that it changed somebody. When somebody receives the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost, it rips out their de desire to sin. They can prophesy of all things. They hear the voice of Jesus Christ now speak to them to a level where they're ready to take that next step up the ascension ladder. That has been lost since the days of Joseph Smith. We now say, hello, eight-year-old or recent convert. In a public setting, we're going to give reverent words and say, receive the Holy Ghost. It's okay, nice well, things. I, I, I don't, yeah. I, and I don't I, want to talk bad about I, it. I, I just, I just, I just let, let me say. make this last point. Let yeah. me make this last point. That right there, what I'm describing is not the Melchizedek priesthood in action. That is not the bestowal of the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so here's I, my, let, 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 here, I'll go and I, I, can go. Okay, I've got a I look at questions. that and I think, okay, we well, could kind of say that a bit about America. And isn't that the pride cycle as determined in the Book of Mormon? Because like, I'm just coming at you with Book of Mormon scriptures here. Well, Book of well, Mormon was revolutionary. Cycle? Let me finish. Book of Mormon was revolutionary because it says, okay, the son is not responsible for the sins of the father. It inherently takes a lot of the traditional Christian conception of generational curses, uh, sons bearing the the guilt and the sin of their fathers, turns it on its head, said Adam fell that men might be, men are that they might have joy, and categorically rejects this idea that others are responsible for the sins 
of their fathers. So if you're saying that the church comes in and is rejected with their dead, that would mean that the salvation of those dead would be dependent upon others, the living, which seems like it would go against that idea that we're not held responsible for our own sins, that our salvation is inherently tied to others, right? Yeah. There's a clear pattern for it. In I, know, other words, and I the, get God can be a harsh yeah. God. I read the Old Testament. Yeah, well, in, so. in other words, I mean, the ancient Israelites went through it when they wouldn't climb the mountain for themselves to enter into the rest of the Lord. Okay. You're demoted, Aaronic priesthood only. You're going to go however many generations in this demoted state, still being a covenant people with great blessings waiting for you. But they didn't have the Melchizedek priesthood, no baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost. And it has continued for however many generations. So now. then that doesn't necessarily make you. Who it's it's people rejecting too... God. In other words, that th yeah. those higher ordinances are reserved for people who accept the fullness of the gospel, not for those who reject it and turn it into polygamy. Uh, okay. So and, uh, and now the polygamy has gone. Okay, are, are we just still by just, default in apostasy? Well, in other words, probably the here's what I would liken it unto the circumstances in the very first chapter of the book of Mormon. You okay. got millions of covenant people of the Lord. The temple is in the heart of the city with sacrifices happening day and night. The church leaders in the days of Jeremiah and Lehi are the most respected and powerful men of the whole city. There's a great history of prophets and prophesying. There's a long history of God intervening miraculously on their behalf. And yet they're about to be destroyed for their wickedness. What? We all went to church on Sunday. I went to my elders quorum meeting and I, and I sat through a, a bishop's council and everything else. Yeah, it's a pride cycle. Tough yeah, times it, make tough In other people, words, people, people can it. be incredibly religious and even say, I can point to all of these outward observances to prove my righteousness. And yet they're about to be destroyed. The Latter-day Saints are in those circumstances exactly right now because they have changed the new and everlasting covenant of offering God your broken heart spirit into polygamy. Now they've walked it back to just temple marriage. That is not the covenant that Jesus asks can, of us. Can I, I, I there's a okay. couple of questions I need to ask. I haven't gotten to talk a lot here. Sure. Um, so, uh, uh, first question is, um, I can, I can see them being rejected, um, you know, for not building the temple. I, I can see that. Um, but they're dead being rejected also is that, that I, I'm not I think Cardin asked that but I'm not sure if that was addressed. Yeah, that would inherently make the dead um, responsible for the sins do you of others. Do you, and do you believe then just so we're clear because these terms are, can be open ended. Right. So yeah. when we say them and their dead were rejected, are you saying that they were rejected eternally will never be in the celestial kingdom or they were rejected as a part of being a major tool to build the kingdom of God at the time? Well, they're definitely rejected as a time. Let me uh, let me point out some ignorance that I have. That term rejected with your dead is most commonly interpreted as uh, the baptisms on behalf of deceased people in the temple are going to be rejected also. That's possibly. There's not much that we have from Joseph Smith, and there's people's interpretation years after him saying that's what it was. It, I simply offer as my opinion and speculation. The term rejected with your dead is referring to the spiritually dead that now were now being baptized in a higher order in the temple in Kirtland and later for what was meant to be happening in Nauvoo as well. So, so it's speculation on my part, and I'm gonna, and I'm pointing it out as that so you know that I'm not trying to teach any sort of new doctrine. No, no, yeah, I just want – there's a lot of questions I have that are kind of those specific, so I kind of yeah. want to get into – um, because the comments are going to are going to point these out, and if we don't point them out, yeah. the comments. Well, and and, and so, I try to be quick about pointing out when I'm speculating. Other things right. I think are firmly established in, in the scriptures. So, um, so I would I would kind of take that as rejecting them with their dead, meaning perhaps the ordinances, like the actual performing the ordinances. I'm not accepting that ordinance practice right now, as yeah. opposed to I'm rejecting those dead children. Yeah. In other words, those who are worthy to be able to perform that ordinance being referred to, whatever the specifics may be, the Lord is saying, I will have none of it from you. Okay, so I want to step back um, from the individual trees and take Wait, a look one at more, this forest. one more. I have one more. Okay. Sorry, um, yeah, I like um, Quaku's questions the best. So, Let him go. Quaku? Uh, <laughs> Quaku. Quaku, you're Quaku now, and I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> oh. I'm going to profit off of you. So uh, the um, – what, what this kind of also suggests that the church was rejected – yeah, about a decade before Joseph Smith was assassinated. Yes, so it now, was a fallen church right, right. for that. Yeah, period. and here's some here's some things on it. Like I'll send plenty of things your way if you ever want to have a follow up conversation. But the uh, 1835 edition of the Doctrine of Covenants is published by the. Well, first let me point this out: the original name of the church, three words: Church 
of Christ. And it's consistent with 3 Nephi 27 to where it is my church if it is in my name, built on my gospel. Because the Latter-day Saints in 1834 were no longer built upon the gospel of Jesus Christ, they wouldn't enter into the rest of the Lord in Kirtland. Now they're demoted to the Church of the Latter-day Saints. The uh, the uh, Kirtland Temple, which is still up there today, you can look up the Google image search. If you just type in Kirtland Temple, one of the first images that pops up is built by the Church of the Latter-day Saints. They did not have authorization to claim to be Jesus Christ Church. The Nauvoo Temple was commanded of them that they might be risen up to that higher level and once again be Jesus Christ Church. Okay. So, so was Joseph a fallen prophet at the time of his assassination no joseph was was similar into the circumstances of moses to where he had climbed the mountain he knew god for himself that's why he taught so openly regarding the second comforter and having one's calling and election make sure there were a handful of people that that we know of others maybe speculate who followed and received the baptism of fire and of the holy ghost the way that the scriptures teach who continued to hear the voice of jesus christ and follow it until they became witnesses of jesus christ and then continue on until jesus presented them to the father as joseph was teaching that more frequently it is now the last part of his life before he's assassinated that pure plain doctrine of christ of baptism of fire and of the holy ghost second comforter with jesus christ and follow jesus until he presents you to the father that has been lost since then um okay and one more sorry Carden. okay hit it um uh, well, don't also, apologize. Well, you take also, it quick, Kweku, You take it and don't apologize. No. Also, it's it's this is a new, this is a new like movement. So we're trying to figure out what exactly the beliefs are, right? Yeah. So, You're going to find out. So, um, General Conference has been starting off trying to respond to this. There's training that stake presidents and bishops are receiving. Like I, I could give you more insider well, well, information. Well, that's the thing, though. It's like, well, so are you a separate church? No, or, and see, and, and I, well, because the- you're all excommunicated that are making the videos. Well, I noticed. I would say the majority of people are active members of the church. I regularly work with people who are Rock either on. current bishops or in bishoprics. Some people in stake presidencies, others who are uh, others who are leaders of congregations in different countries. There is an awakening happening in the church, and it is. I don't want to say big, but like any member of the church who is actively offering this prayer, Heavenly Father. If you give me instructions, I covenant to follow it no matter what. They start to receive experiences that rip their eyelids off. Um, for some people, it, it is it is incredibly painful. For others, they realize this is what I've asked for. My my life finally feels turned right side up. Okay, so, but so, it is a re- it is did, a repentance process that is happening. So this last question I have before on, on the on this subject of this rejecting like the dead. Third last question. They, <laughs> so I, I have I usually talk a lot, but I haven't because I'm just kind of listening. Do it. So, do it. Um, Soak it in. Um, would this also mean that you guys reject eternal marriage in heaven? Well, the idea of of marriage the way that the church teaches it just doesn't have any scriptural foundation, um, and it is what is now the temple has now been changed into. If anybody wants to look up the changes over the generations in the temple, it has been reduced so dramatically um, to where now the wording at certain parts is in the new and everlasting covenant referring to marriage, to where they still have that fundamental that core rejection of the new and everlasting covenant by calling it marriage. Um, it has been an incredibly effective tool in making people fearful of looking for any information outside of the corporate church. So, no, I don't believe that temple marriage as practiced by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has a shred of validity to it. Well, so, I mean, uh, so are you married? Well, Jacob? I think saying it doesn't have a shred yeah. is a little well, bit. Wait, 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 maybe there, maybe me there's clarify, some foundation. No, be, be careful. Like, he'll he'll tell church. you that you're just yeah. an arrogant <laughs> prick if you disagree uh, yeah. with well, him. Remember this. You and I, that and let me, let me say this, Brad. You and I need to have chicken wings together because I'll make up for that. Please, please be... Uh, <laughs> Patient with me as I as I give a jab or two. I'll do my best to be patient with you too. But I I, I want to get across to you. I'm I'm just saying, just saying from what I watched of the movie that you guys produced and what I'm hearing from you now. We haven't even gotten into the movie yet. Yeah, I know. Can I ask one? Okay, fine. We can go to that. (laughs) One more question on the subject because I I, I, okay, we got we got to get the specific. So. Are you're are you mar- you're married, Jacob? Right? Yeah, three kids. Okay. Do you believe married you'll, in the temple? Do you believe you'll be married, or like ha- have a romantic, eternal relationship with your wife? Well, possibly. In, in other words, I I used to when I was I, I went through a divorce in my twenties. So here's there's something for you. Married in the temple to the state president's daughter. 
And when she left me, ripped my that guts out. That was your first out. mistake. It, I did it too, bro. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Well, in other <laughs> words, awesome. it, 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 took, it took me through some of the pain that was required of me in this life. And it caused me to draw closer to the Lord. But my, my concept was getting married at age 22, not, not even home for a whole year from my mission yet. My concept was, bam, I'm on the track to the celestial kingdom right now. Going to have this wonderful woman right here by my side. My understanding since having this spiritual awakening, because it has been an explosion of faith, dedication to the Lord, and meaningful missionary experiences and ministerial opportunities like I've never experienced. I don't have the same view that because of the ordinance that took place there, it's going to be a similar sort of celestial version of the relationship that I have here. Knowing that God respects agency, if people don't exercise the agency to like be sealed to each other in this life the way that they're meant to, well, why would there be that kind of partnership afterwards? So I do believe it's something that's available, but I don't believe it's contingent upon what the LDS church does in the temple. Okay. 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 Now, who, Brad, you had, a, you had a question, right? You wanted to- oh, no. Let Cardin finish it. <laughs> um, well, now I'm on my like my seventh question that I wanted yeah. to ask. You know what I'm saying? But I hope you're writing these down in notes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. So, but this Let is me, the first podcast we've done where we're interviewing someone where I haven't been bored. Like, yeah. like I some no, no, okay. like this is and, audience, and it's good shred. because Ask here's your the deal. Audience, if they feel the same way, if they're having, I don't fun have with a shred. Thing. I'm ne- sometimes because here's the deal. We're we're very used to hearing stuff about like general attacks against the church. In fact, most of the time, pri- trying to attack us because Joseph Smith was a polygamist, right? And um, all sorts of attacks around the church, the Book of Mormon, evidence of the Book of Mormon, things like that. So to well, get real hyper specific into the doctrine and covenants like this is new. It's well, it's probably good. Me, I got to tell you, this is something that could only exist in Utah because only in Utah, where there's so many freaking Mormons, could people dice and and get into the nitty gritty of whether or not we were nitty gritty enough. For, you'd be outside, dude, go, go to church in Manhattan. You're all just happy to be there because it's godless Babylon outside. <laughs> you know, and, and we don't have these factional Everybody just wars. hugs each other like thank you for. No, being seriously, here. church in New York and Los Angeles is totally different. Because like when it's raining outside, you don't care what color the person's umbrella is that they're handing to you. Yeah. But when it's dry outside, y'all start arguing about the colors of umbrellas. So look, you got your history of who shot Joseph Smith. At the end of the day, I don't think God's going to be quizzing us on who jo- shot Joseph Smith. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be quizzing us. It on, only matters if we, that's our stumbling block. Did, did we repent and did we forgive? Yeah. yeah well, my, my, that's it, see, that's hold, an interesting hold, point. Hold on a mother freaking second. I let you guys ask endless questions. <laughs> after the moment swear words questions. out of him. Do it again. No. So anyway, um, is it possible? You've suggested multiple times stumbling box. Is it possible that your interpretation of these historical references, which get very dicey, if you wanted to look up the history of us making it to the moon landing, you could be convinced that that one rock that had Studio 55 on it is proof that that rock was actually rented from, uh, you know, the the studio they shot the moon landing on. I I mean, I've got got good friends that I consider good men of God who believe that the earth is flat. No, no, okay, rock on, (laughs) that's cool. Um, we want to interview them too. I thought I was the conspiracy. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. I'm a fraud. Okay, way, I'm it's a fraud. not flat. We all know that it's like a pancake, multiple discs okay. on top of each other. Keep going. With, keep but going with anyway, your thought. So my question was: Is it possible that maybe the alternate interpretation of history, other than the traditional narrative you've been taught, can become a stumbling block for you guys as well? Because it seems like a lot of these leaders, it's resulted in such conflict that it's resulted in mis- uh, excommunication, yeah. divorces. Dude, the, the corporation loves to excommunicate. They freaking love it. Uh, um, what, let, let, let me, well, let me start to answer this. In other words, could it be a stumbling process that's run by local leadership, yeah, not the corporation? I'm, I'm sure. And, and some so of them tell are me again about the I get it. <laughs> Some of them are boneheads. No. But at the end of the day... I push back from this idea that, oh, the corporation loves to excommunicate it because it's, nobody makes money. <laughs> so on there this was a, the, the multimillionaire Jeremy R. Yagi is the one who inserted himself to pressure my stake president. Yeah. At the local level. Uh, yeah. The Jeremy. I, so we're going to get him on the show. What up, him. Jeremy? I'd love to talk You're to him. I've actually you. reached no, out to him <laughs> trying to get some chicken wings with him as well. Uh, your question. Can the alternative version of history be a stumbling block? Yes, of course. I view it regularly. In other words, even though I had. 
I had in January of 2020, I've, I have alluded to it before, and I'm just going to say it incredibly briefly. I had a baptism of fire experience, and I didn't know what it was because I'd never experienced anything like that, where burst out my heart through the ends of my arms, through my beard hairs, my fingertips and everything else. Right, and right, my right. desire to sin was gone. Absolutely gone. And I'm a good dude by the standards of the world. Like say like, hey, any worldly standards, Jacob's a good dude. My desire to sin ripped away. The beautiful natural curvature of ladies no longer in my mind of any time. I spend a, a grand total of zero minutes wasting time on YouTube, following the news cycle, watching guitar videos or anything else. And I had four consecutive days of hearing the voice of the Lord. Okay. Normally, when I ask a prayer in my heart and in my mind, I fe might feel some confirmation of this or feel good about this, but I mainly have to say, Heavenly Father, I think it's the right thing is this. Those four days, instant, it, it, beyond gratifying recognition that the Lord was telling me, yes, no, yes, no, guiding yeah. my every action. Now, even though I had that baptism of fire experience and it's life changing, I weep still like I'm a, I, I will get on the verge of tears and start weeping if I start contemplating what it was like when that went away. Now, the alternate history, can it be a stumbling block? Yes. I still regularly present my heart and mind to my Heavenly Father. Hey, Heavenly Father, thank you for guiding me this far. I'm grateful for the spiritual experiences that have happened. If I'm on the wrong path, please, I beg of you, show me, put me on the right path. And as I keep that level of humility to where I'm still willing to have my world turned upside down or turned right side up, however you want to look at it, that's the only way that I feel safe continuing moving forward is having that level of humility. Okay, so then two questions here. First off, people that are adopting your worldview or your historical historic view of who shot Joseph Smith and so on and so forth, what do you ask your adherents to do, shall we say? the people? I don't have an adherent, and I don't know anybody in the group who wants an adherent. It is exclusively repent and return to Christ. Because I, I know we want to word but, but it in a way where it seems like there, there's a new though. organization trying to get recruits. But it's like, to, if there's anybody like that, like if there's anybody in the Doctrine of Christ group okay. loosely affiliated or, or closely affiliated, if they believe they're meant to get adherents to hell with you guys. Okay, so, so what are you guys then? You're not repenting or returning to Christ. In other words, the call that happened in the very first chapter of the Book of Mormon to repent and return or else we're going to be destroyed, that's the call going out again right now. Um, okay. In other words, one one of the specifics that's well, it's that kind is, of always uh, and so going out, who, but you guys yeah, are who are the prophets? The and, who are the let, prophets let that are telling us well, that this uh, is the timing, the timeline that's happening? Oh, so that, that's I, I my curiosity. I don't know of anybody along those lines to where they've been called into the presence of the Lord, like Lehi of old and Jeremiah of old. And now they're going out and saying that the, what I feel on a personal level, and I recognize a, a spiritual mandate is to teach the message of the Book of Mormon to where we have to turn our hearts to God. For example, let me just do a 45 second or less version of Isaiah chapter one. Keep in mind. Oh, okay, but before you get into that, and, and I, and I want to let you do that. And I know we're I jumping around, know but it's more fun. If, if you're saying, you're, <laughs> so you're saying though that, okay, we lost the Melchizedek priesthood. Yeah. The, 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 the dead were not redeemed. We're in this period of uh, apostasy right now. Yeah. Wasn't the guarantee to Joseph Smith in the Doctrine and Covenants that he received the priesthood and it never again would be taken in from the earth well, until Jesus close. Christ Close. Joseph came? Smith was told that he would never lose the keys. That's something very different. So Joseph was killed and he'll be back and it, and it will be unmistakable when that end time exodus happens. There will be, in you other words, you seem like about, you know what scripture I'm referring to. Which one is it, my man? Oh, I, I can't remember the section okay, that, okay, that, that it's referring to. But, but in other words, if somebody does in their digital application, uh, the, never lose the keys, it will be pulling that up in the Doctrine and Covenants. Um, so does this also mean that you reject Doctrine and Covenants 138, Joseph F. Smith's vision of the spirit world? It, it I believe it, it really is what it is. In other words, I believe that uh, Joseph F. Smith is very sincere in retelling what we have that now as Doctrine and Covenant section 130. I believe he was honest. What I know of Joseph F. Smith, the son of Hiram, the nephew of Joseph Smith, he manifested great spiritual gifts in his youth and in his teenage years. And by the time he was now in top church leadership in, in Utah, those spiritual gifts were completely absent. When he was called before Congress, to answer questions about polygamy, it, 
it was it was embarrassing for the church. It was reported as embarrassing for the church um, in the Utah outlets as well as other places reporting on it. Um, but, but I believe it, isn't really the Israelites did, getting that, stuck for forty years in the wilderness embarrassing for the church? So like there's, I said, aren't the Israelites being stuck for forty years in the wilderness after being God's covenant people? And being saved by Moses himself, well, that's embarrassing. Just because a church on a large scale went through an embarrassing time, yeah. I don't think is necessarily inherently proof well, that they has lost. Has there been it any? All, right? Does the church have need to repent of its polygamous history, and has that happened? Does the church have need? Uh, are you uh, saying church big? Tr yeah. Sierra in other words, I'm um, asking: Does the church have need to repent? May I, may I answer political. your question oh, with a, a question? That's a good question. Oh, um, you're doing the answer to the question with a question. No, no, thing? it's legit because okay. uh, um, I'm, I'm not. It's not a gotcha. Uh, would that actually matter if the church was already rejected before polygamy? Yeah, with so the, it doesn't matter. In other words, right? for me, right. even though I like these questions, yeah, none of it matters. The only thing that matters right now is learning from personal revelation how to offer God your broken heart and contrite spirit. It literally only happens oh. when somebody says. Heavenly Father, you have to teach me what you want. Uh, okay, and but I promise also, to give it. But John Taylor and Wilfred Woodruff killing Joseph Smith, that that's kind of a big you know, yeah. 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 So, so yeah. the only thing that matters uh, that's like, to Willard me Willard that Richards. would be a sorry, yeah. Yeah. Willard, to me that's and, like and let a me, big, let me give big, one big, for big. people to start musing over. Here's some of the wounds that are on Hiram's body that cause that, that make it very well, obvious. We could get into the forensics later. Like and yeah, that, when we that, actually that could be its its own podcast, I'm down with. I'm just trying to wrap my, my my head around the morality of this. Yes. Um, only because I, I guess now what I'm asking is, well, where does this go? Because, for example, if I were your stake president or whatever, and somebody said, yo, dude, there's this guy that's like, you know, convinced that Joseph Smith really wasn't down with polygamy. I'd be like, OK, well, I mean, there's multiple times he said he didn't like the idea, but he was commanded. So fine. That doesn't seem too far off based. Oh, and he's suggesting that there's an alternate version of who killed Joseph Smith. OK, well, there's also an alternate version of 17 different histories. Okay, is he cheating on his wife? No. Okay, is he reading his scriptures daily? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Like, I I, I view it Did as kind his of home teaching. I, I hate to say it, but it's kind of a nothing burger. Like, okay, it's a controversial nothing uh, burger until but it becomes until it becomes what? Because if you guys are all getting excommunicated, it's got to be for something. And it yeah. seems like your interpretation of history requires. And tell me if I'm interpreting this wrong. It seems like your 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 newfound interpretation of the Doctrine and Covenants and, and the history of the church requires that we no longer think that modern prophets have any validity. Who's, who's this modern prophet you speak of? Ah, Russell M. Nelson. Because? Uh, what we would consider the line of authority because prophets yeah. won't be taken. But, but you notice that you're not referring to him prophesying. You're just simply saying line of authority because that's the corporate narrative. Prophets prophesy the same way musicians make music. Uh, yes, I agree with you. I will say, though, I think the deference to the authoritative argument and what, you know, philosophers call certification by authority, OK, or an argument by authority is the one that that's that's the one that's most worldwide understood. Appeals to authority are the easiest to understand. I yeah. could say, well, actually, pre-pandemic, he had this awesome idea that we should actually have church from home, which at that point was oh. revolutionary for us. And then it oh. ended up being a really, really good thing, even though the pandemic was locking us all down. And so I could do that laborious one, or I could just describe okay. that, okay, God gave the priesthood. Well, priesthood here, has authority. Here's the very first authority. chapter of the Book of Mormon. Lehi's called into the presence of the Lord and now has authority to say, if you guys don't repent, you're going to suffer the the destruction that I read about when I was caught away in the spirit and received this message. Lehi taught what he saw and heard. Here is an established okay. fact. President Nelson has never published a prophecy in his entire life. Here is an established fact. He has never testified of any direct encounter with Jesus Christ. Okay, but we also so based have... upon what is he a prophet? He uh, okay. testifies of Christ but all the time. Has... So does Joel Austin and the Pope. Yeah, no, I get that. But also, I mean, in his last conference, what's talk, distinguishing for example, about him? What definition of a prophet would not equally apply to people who follow their uh, their Christian religious leader? That, that's the, a good question. The, the line of authority that Cardin was yeah. talking about, and that that's through Joseph why Smith, that is through the restoration. When that becomes the foundation of him being a prophet, that's why he falls apart upon examination. Uh, okay, I, I just want to say though, to me that seems like a really, really difficult and 
un I don't want to say untheological, but yeah. un I don't want to say unattainable, but that's not the bar that I think God requires because if every single God had to be revolutionary, his children would be burnt out. <laughs> it, I mean, there were Sam's Nephi had a younger brother, Sam, Sam got to see an angel just like Nephi did. Sam witnessed all of the miracles and all of the visions. He doesn't get a lot of pub because you know, he wasn't Nephi. Well, and let, let me, let me make it simpler. Is president Nelson a prophet the same way that Joseph Smith is and why? Yes. And no, I would say having the authority and the priesthood from God. Yes. Really? Because the, there's a story saying, because I'm president of the corporation, well, there's an finish. unbroken line. Let okay. But, you put words well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry finish. for interrupting, but I'm really trying to get to what's the same yeah. that makes him a prophet. So I would say, because God, wants prophets in his church and reserves that as a position for when he wants to speak to his people. So I think there's part of the prophet is being ready in waiting, waiting upon the Lord for direction and diction. So I think that just because you're not actively receiving a revelation and publishing them once every three weeks, like Joseph Smith was just because you are in waiting for that, just like we have lawyers on retainer. I think having prophets on retainer is not evidence of the lack of their propheticness as much as it is evidence that God cares for his sheep and his people. Can, can I ask one and see who wants to answer it? Well, Children. and then I was going to, I was going to answer the second half. Your oh, I, I know, I know, but you're, you're going on lawyerly and I think it's much more simple than this. Okay. Children okay. that are being raised in the church, can they obtain a salvific relationship of Jesus Christ without believing that president Nelson is a prophet? Can children who are raised in our church, yeah. children in the church right now, can they obtain a saving that. relationship with Jesus Christ if they don't believe that President Nelson is a prophet? Uh, to me, I think the closer you get, it's like a triangle. The closer you get to God, the closer you get to I, I, anybody else. I guess in theory that, you could, but that's kind of like when people say like, well, the closer you get to your church the you know it takes more time away from your family well I, I think the more that you're studying the ways of god the closer you actually get to your family it's like a triangle so um take that one who wants to take that one Can I, I, I don't know i think church? that's a really i think it's just a kind of a bad question sorry well, to well, say that give it a, but give like it a try try I, to explain that one so can here, somebody uh, be saved through jesus christ think about anybody in the church can they obtain salvation through jesus christ if they do not believe that president nelson is a prophet Start with a yes or no and then explain. I would say yes. I would say yes. Because I know for a fact that God grades on a curve. Nobody on this earth is perfect. Okay. So in and other it, words, believing that he's a prophet gets you closer to perfection? Uh, no, no. I'm saying that let's just say there really were 10 temple, temple recommend questions to get into heaven. Ain't nobody actually really answering nine out of 10 of them. I think you're holy if you're answering eight out of 10 of them. Okay. And I think God knows that. And the gospel takes bad men and makes them good and good men and makes them better, but it doesn't make anybody perfect. So just like in college, if the highest score gets a 93 and the professor bumps, you know, the curve down to 93, I think God does that. So I think there could be kids if they had such a great experience like you did. And this is why I said, like, I wouldn't excommunicate you for these ideas. If if this is what's making you, if on you were fire, protecting the corporation, you would. Yeah, well, then those people are wrong, and and, and dude, when you say and stuff no like that, you just sound. Yeah, you, you sound like ex Mormon subreddit. Yeah, you do sound like. But at least you still have yeah. a yeah. relationship except, with Jesus, except, which I appreciate. I believe that Jesus Christ yeah. is absolutely alive and leading people to Him, and it does not require a relationship with the with the president of the corporation. So, so In here's words, my question he has, then: President do Nelson you, did not perform an atonement for anybody. There is no opinion that's. And required. he's never said that he has. I'm curious. Do you, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. But what what separates you, you from born again Christians? I'm just curious. What separates you from born again Christians, though? Finish. Hold on. Let, let, let's let, think about this for a moment. If you were a bishop or a branch president interviewing a potential baptismal candidate, and they exercised miraculous faith in Jesus Christ, overcame addictions, and changed their life, they want to get baptized, ready to pay tithing, but they're asked. Do you believe that he's a prophet, seer, and a revelator? Well, I don't know about that because I've been reading the scriptures and he doesn't seem the same. If it's a fundamental Anybody aspect would of the be denied baptism into the corporation based upon their opinion of President Nelson. So that's a sure sign that they. That wait, it, wait, but hold on. Hold on. I, I want to answer yeah. your question. Yeah. I don't think they would want to get baptized in our church 
if they didn't yeah. see the value of the restoration of the priesthood and modern day prophets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so, I would agree with that because that's that's really what the church sells over and over and over again is an unbroken line of succession. Don't, Please don't, don't like ask it. us where I, the prophecy is. I don't like the is. verbiage of selling. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I didn't sell anything on well, my mission. I paid for What percentage mission. of mission presidents do you believe have a sales background, uh, a formidable Most sales of them are background. stupid boomers. So I'm sorry, did I say stupid? <laughs> most of them are boomers. <laughs> and, so in other words, I use the term with, selling because it's accurate. Uh, uh, okay, to some. I wouldn't say so. Well, out of out of the dozens of mission presidents that I know of, 100 percent of them. OK, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go Brad on background. you, but I will say that I draw a line at saying selling because I view it as disrespectful to people who are wholly decent doing it for wholly benevolent actions. I, I believe that. And then, then I'll so, take it back and I will apologize for that. characterization. Okay. So um, I, I'm down with everything you say, but this is my only worry. Oftentimes movements for things. And it seems like a lot of what you said, I actually like, you know, movement for, hey, let's get that birth of baptism by fire. That's lacking. And I, I agree with you. I think it is. Lacking. Not only that, there's no salvation without it. If you believe. Exactly. No, no if you believe it. that, hey, because so, somebody put their hands on my I, head. I get it. Like, I, I get not going to do it. So, so there's a lot of things that I like. And it seems like what I like that I'm hearing is, OK, let's get that baptism by fire. Oh, hey you know what, we're getting lost in the minutia of the uh, uh, everlasting covenant. You know, let's go back to basics because the basics are good. And the beginning of the everlasting co covenant is getting sealed to Christ and giving him your heart, my, mind, and strength. Like, I get all of that. However, just like movements for things, like those good things I just mentioned, can start as movement for things, they quickly atrophy into movements against things. And so it seems like all of these fours I agree with, but then it rounds a corner where all of a sudden I'm getting told that I'm selling something, defending a corporation. Yeah. And it quickly seems like your movement has become against what you perceive yeah. is a corporatized church. Yeah. And In other words, the, the corporation known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not recognized by the Savior Jesus Christ as his institution. Okay. Awesome. Um that, though, is an anti-movement, not a movement. Well, it might be anti to the corporation. It's very pro-Christ. Okay, but also the guys that like home wreck for profit over the Open Stories Foundation, like What's give that? us those exact same like Mormon Stories podcasts and stuff. Uh, okay. They say, I, I oh, we're really pro-family. That's why we tell men to go get divorced from their wives that are TBMs. Yeah, and, and, and I don't, and I don't really care about them. In, in other words... It, hopefully you're getting from me to where it is all about obtaining an actual saving relationship with Jesus Christ. That part I'm down with. Yeah. So when it so, comes to, uh, can we yeah, get back ahead. to my but question does your doctrine on require, this is my last question that you guys can have. have okay. at it. Is it a requirement? You asked, is it a requirement to have a salvific relationship? Yeah. Can somebody Christ? have a salvific relationship with Jesus Christ absent any testimony of president? Okay. Nelson? Is it a requirement of your belief structure? I won't say theology because you don't say you're a church, but is your schema of beliefs, does your schema of beliefs require that a child in our church reject the idea of modern prophets? No, it's it's not about rejecting anything else. Then it why can't we say that? Yeah. Well, it, it, in other words, here's the way that, that I recognize it. Okay. The gospel is by design so simple that the ignorant, illiterate people throughout the generations, because we're in an incredibly blessed generation right now where it's kind of taken for granted that you know how to read and write and you've been taken through some, some basic logic training and you can be held accountable greater for it than in any generation past. In the red states, but yeah. But the gospel is designed in a way to where my sweet, ignorant, and previously illiterate Mexican grandma, she can hear the gospel taught in its purity and know how to offer God her broken heart and contrite spirit in a way to where she's baptized by fire and by the Holy Ghost is sealed as a daughter of Christ and now has greater access to the spirit. And it had nothing to do with any belief in any corporate structure at so, all. So again, my question, what separates you from born again movements? Just I don't general know. I don't born know again the born Christianity. Again movements do. They, exactly what you're talking about, where you have a I've never been a, I've salvific never been a experience. Like I am... Long You're baptized by fire. That's all that matters. There's no priesthood authority given to men through 
God? Like, uh, what, what about well, the restoration I, I of the very, priesthood? I, I, I very Smith much believe too. in priesthood authority. And I very much believe in priesthood authority, at least in principle, the way that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches it. The experience that I went through beginning December of, of 2019, and it was actually months leading up to that, I didn't recognize it at the time. It was circumstances by which I had power in the Aaronic priesthood sealed upon me. I didn't recognize it at the time. It was the things that I wrote in my journal leading up to it, impressions that I was receiving. It was the event culminating in that baptism of fire experience and recognizing how one actively calls upon the administration of angels using the Aaronic priesthood. So you believe the church still has the keys for the yes. Uh, in other words, Aaronic every, priesthood. In other words, the male members of the church who have gone through it, they legitimately have been ordained to the Aaronic priesthood, and there is a testing period that they can invite to happen in their lives by which they will have power in the Aaronic priesthood sealed upon them, and they will be instructed how to exercise the keys for the ministering of angels. And the Melchizedek priesthood, though, has been taken. Yeah, they from haven't the had it since the 1830s. Um, not even Joseph Smith. Okay, Joseph Smith certainly did. He did not. Lo- he did not lose it. Neither did Oliver Cowdery and a handful of others who were described. The, the term that was used in those days is the Holy Order. There was a handful of men who were faithful to enter into the presence of the Lord and receive the instruction that comes directly from the Savior. They did not lose it, but the body of the church in general did. Uh, this might. This question might be too complicated. It might have to be a separate podcast. I, I was about to say we're, we're uh, uh-huh. okay. So we're. <laughs> We're probably going to have to invite him back. It's already been. I hope I've made it worth your while. It's, yeah, and I'm, no. The it, beard Brad, alone I'm sorry for the insult it. that I levied at No, no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I levy insults at me. I, I, I attract them. <laughs> I'm a radio host yeah. in Los Angeles. Though. I also like, dipped to the bathroom for a sec, so I came in a little bit lost is what you guys are talking dude, about. Dude, they, they cut away to your empty chair and everybody just gasped. <laughs> yeah, it was really um, funny. But, yeah, I mean, this was yeah heck no, of a no, podcast. Th- this is awesome. <laughs> we want to have you back. Okay, I had something, but all of us were like just dogpiling trying to ask, and now I can't remember what my great outro question was going to be. Jeez, Louise. you know what I'm saying? Could, yeah, really super frustrating. But I guess that's a good thing. Can we? Because it means we're going to have to invite you back here at least end this podcast. Okay, stay on the line. We're going to coordinate uh, uh, on the other side of this. This is Midnight Mormons on FM ninety eight point one.